I just finished replacing all the brake pads on the front and back and I still have quite a bit of brake travel. So with the car off, I push the brake pedal, it goes down pretty far. Of course, if you pump it a couple times, it gets pretty uh, stiff. It only moves about maybe three quarters to an inch. And if I start it, let my foot off, then the brake pedal travels way down again. If I pump it, it gets a little harder to push, but uh, if I start driving it, it basically sinks almost to the bottom again. This is the panel on the driver's side that gives you access to the brake fluid reservoir. There is a connector right here. I've already disconnected it. It's got a small detent on it that you have to push down on to get it to release. If you try to leave this on or leave the connector on the cap when you go to remove it, you'll find it's very difficult because unless you have a longer cable, it's got a long plunger on it. So it's going to be difficult to get out. So the best thing to do is just disconnect it. And then just remember to put it back on. Otherwise it'll keep telling you that your brake fluid level is low. I've already made sure that I've cleaned up around the top of the reservoir just make sure no contamination gets inside the, the reservoir the uh, fluid doesn't look that bad Man, it's kind of brown this is a 2016 Land Rover LR4 HSE we got it in 2017 so about four years and of course there's many different things including the manual that'll tell you how often you should change it out anywhere from every two years to four years to six years so what i'm going to do is i'm not going to take all the fluid out i'm going to draw some of the fluid out and then cap it off with new fluid and then i'm going to go through and bleed each of the brake calipers starting with the passenger side rear then the driver's side rear then the passenger side front and then the driver's side front using a plastic bottle and tubing i have a bottle here that i'm going to drill a 5 16 hole in the top and then also a smaller hole a breather hole off to the side this bottle is completely dry i couldn't get it to dry fast enough so i used a uh, heat gun at the lowest setting when I drill this hole well the holes in this cap I'm not going to have the cap on the bottle because when you drill the hole all the little uh, bits and fragments from the cap are going to fall inside the bottle and then I'm going to have to clean the bottle again so I'm going to drill the holes with the cap off like I said I'm using a 5 16 bit and this tubing is 3 8 outer diameter so the good thing is that the bit is uh, not as wide as the tubing so it'll give me a nice tight fit when I put this tubing into the cap otherwise if I didn't have a good seal I'd probably have to put some silicone on here uh, just to keep it in the cap because what you don't want to have happen is the tube comes out of the cap or the tubing gets pulled up and you get uh, a lot of air in the tubing this 3 8 outer diameter tubing uh, fits perfectly over the bleeder on the caliper. I do have some zip ties if needed, but I think this is going to be just tight enough to keep a good seal. If it's not, then I will put these zip ties on to uh, keep a nice tight seal around the bleeder. Because I'm working specifically on a 2016 Land Rover LR4 HSE, it does call specifically for the DOT4 low viscosity brake fluid. This is uh, 1.06 quarts or uh, 32 ounces. Uh, this is Pentacin. And one of the things they do say is that do not mix this with other DOT3, DOT4 uh, fluids or brake fluids. Hopefully this will be enough 
to get all four brakes bled and then get the brake pedal travel fixed. So that's cleaned up. Go ahead and put my breather hole off to the side. And I'll put this tubing. It's definitely a pretty tight fit and it's not really, it's not closing the tubing off at all. The good thing is that I know that the tubing will stay in the bottle. And then I'm also going to make sure the tubing goes all the way to the very bottom. same bottle that I'm going to use to bleed the brake calipers to remove some of the bad fluid. I'm going to remove some of it, not all of it, because you want to leave some in there so that you don't get it down to where you have air going into your lines when you're trying to prevent that in the first place. And I've got my bottle in a nice stable spot and I'm going to use a pump to extract some of this fluid out. And then also by putting that fluid in this bottle, it's also going to help me conserve some of the brake fluid uh, that I'm going to use. The only purpose behind the fluid that's in here is to get the, the fluid that's coming out of the brake calipers to go in and then what happens is the air comes up and goes out the, the breather at the top rather than the air or the bad fluid going back up in the line. You definitely want to be careful with this brake fluid. Very corrosive. So you don't want to get it on anywhere. You want to clean it up if you do get it on anything. There's also a strainer. this pump for a very long time so it's probably had its days it has some pretty nasty looking fluids almost like a rusty brown so there could be some rust in the system and in some cases you might find that when you go to bleed it you'll have a lot of buildup right where those bleeders are this cap on every time I'm not actively doing anything on the uh, brake fluid reservoir just to avoid any contamination getting in it. For reference, this is what the new fluid looks like. It's got a slight yellow color to it. And this is what the old used brake fluid looks like. Big difference. 
this color could just be over time the temperature of the oil uh, may have been at a you know boiling point or close to it and or it could be water that got into the brake fluid that worked its way down into the lines and so this could be rust I mean, it, in general it looks clean it's not all cloudy it's just dark colored so to me it got on the high temp side basically cooked i'm going to use the funnel to fill this up and i'm going to fill it up over full since i know that i'm going to be losing fluid while i bleed it and i'm using this funnel because the fill neck is kind of set back and i'm going to fill this up slowly to attempt to prevent mixing the old and the new uh, too much uh, unfortunately with the new fluid it makes it a little harder to see whenever you're not using the new bottle but brake fluid you want to make sure that you put the cap on tightly don't just leave it off to the side with the cap off To give you access to the bleeder, you need to remove these rubber pieces out of the way. The wrench size is a 11 millimeter, and you could just leave it in place and then put the tubing over and it'll allow you to open and close it while the tubing stays on there. So I got the 11 millimeter wrench in place. I got my tubing on and I've also made sure that it's going up and it stays up rather than drooping down going into the brake fluid bottle. Alright, so I just opened up the bleeder valve. I just bled it and my line is way too long. That's 36 inch line. I'm going to cut it down, make it shorter. I thought I would need a longer tubing, but I don't. So I'm going to shorten it just to make sure the oil falls straight down to the bottle versus having to go through a loop. And then also I'm checking to see if there's any fluid leakage and there's not. So the tubing does have a good fit on the bleeder valve. I shorten my hose and I have it so that it's at a steady decline to the bottle. And so I just open the bleeder valve again. So I just finished bleeding the uh, passenger side rear and emptied the bottle out a little bit and then also topped off the reservoir. And now I'm going to do the driver side rear brake caliper. Let me know when you're ready. Ready. Okay. This is now the passenger side front brake caliper. Ready? Go ahead and push it in. Okay, Tail it up. Help. 
push it in. What up? I'm doing the last caliper now, which is the driver's side front caliper, and I topped off the brake fluid reservoir again, and I didn't go all the way to the very top. I went right to the max line because I definitely don't want to have this over, over full, and then I'll just top it off once I get through bleeding it. This one has the brake pad sensor cable on it. Okay, push it in. Okay, let it up. Since this is the shortest line, the clear fluid started coming out pretty quick. You got it out? Let it out? Push it in? Here is all the brake fluid that was drained or bled from the calipers. That container is almost completely full. And there's a little bit left in that container. When I got done bleeding the driver's side front caliper, because it's such a short line, clear fluid started coming out of it pretty quick. So when I got done, I just happened to get lucky to where the brake fluid level in the reservoir was just at the max level. So I didn't even have to cap it off. So it all worked out. Uh, the brakes are bled, and the brake pedal has uh, good travel. Well, it had, it's not soft like it was before, and it doesn't sink to the bottom. It's now firmer and doesn't travel to the bottom like it did before.